Hello, I'm Sam Kaufman, and I'd like to spend five minutes talking about Elder. So we're back, five minute video on Elder. I actually started this video months ago and then got sidetracked and I just stumbled upon it. So here we are, January 2017, finishing this video. I apologize because some of the pictures may not be that good since it's winter. I don't really have great pictures of the berries or the flowers, but uh, let's talk briefly about ID. So uh, so Elder uh, flower, five petals, five stamen. It is going to be, um, the, the flowers are on what we call a cyme. It's basically a big cluster, uh, very distinct odor to them, very distinct uh, um, aroma, uh, very very beautiful, uh, but kind of it has its own kind of smell. Once you once you uh, um, uh, learn it, then you'll probably remember it. Uh, same with the taste, and same with the, the taste of the berries. The berries, uh, and we're talking about here Sambucus nigra. Although there are many species, subspecies, uh, this is this is something that botanists argue about. I think a little bit in terms of the, the old world uh, elder from from you know Europe and Eurasia versus the new world uh, um, elder here in the United States. Canadensis versus Nigra versus other species as well, but I'm just going to talk about uh, the Sambucus Nigra, which is pretty much you know accepted as a medicinal uh, um, uh, elder. Although probably most, if not all, of them are interchangeable in that way. Okay, um, so the things we're looking for with the elder. Uh, those flowers I just talked about, and the cymes, the big, the big clusters of flowers, uh, the 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 berries doing the same thing, and big clusters of berries. Uh, the the stems uh, will be sometimes reddish colored. They're going to be opposite. Uh, you're going to see opposite uh, leaves or leaflets rather, uh, odd number with an apical you know leaf on the end. So it'll be five or seven or nine uh, leaflets on that. Usually five or seven, depending on how large the leaflets are. Um, the the bark is as it gets older starts to get these little uh, actually lenticles or little uh, uh, bumps on them uh, that the uh, that you can see uh, they start to kind of form around as as uh, as the bark uh, ages um, you will also uh, be able to uh, see that you know from, from a distance uh, elders kind of stand out because they you know they're a bush they're a very mature bush kind of an understory uh, type of bush that can get up to 10 15 feet tall and uh, likes uh, all kinds it likes sun it likes shade it doesn't like the really hot sun in Texas you know the, the in South Texas so we got to have it in a fairly afternoon shady spot here but uh, normally it can grow in shade or it can grow in moist areas and grow in very dry areas fairly dry not very dry fairly dry areas it's not very drought resistant, uh, not around here anyway, and uh, all kinds of soil. So you find it everywhere pretty much in the U.S. It's it's one of those very uh, ubiquitous medicines that's used in so many ways. Let's talk about its usages now. So the main thing about elder I would say that stands out is that there are, it would be easier to talk about the ways you couldn't prepare this as a medicine in the ways you can. There are so many ways that people cook, prepare, every, you know, the flour and the berry is primarily what's used, um, but but everything from jams and jellies and pies to uh, syrups and, and uh, oxymels and and um, um, all kinds of different kind of alcoholic, uh, you know, tasty alcoholic drinks and the lectuaries and, you know, number of ways that you can prepare both the berry and the, and the leaf, the, I'm sorry, both the berry and the flour. The flour is very much uh, very tasty as well. So you can prepare it as a tasty type of, of medicine as well. It doesn't have to be just the berry. I prefer the flower. Uh, the flower, I would say, is generically more uh, medicinal across a wider spectrum of things that we can use it for. But the berry is very good. It's used a lot in respiratory syrups and, and we see it, you know, that's probably its primary use that we see and people like to drink it in the winter as cold and flu season comes along and, and indeed it's very good for that. However, the flower again is probably my favorite. One thing that people don't really know and realize about elder, however, is that the leaf is also useful and even the bark is useful. It, it has a history of medicinal use. Um, primarily uh, uh, in my opinion, in terms of its of its really of its efficacy medicinally, I would say uh, mostly for things like wound healing, uh, broken bones, and and torn tissue, torn connective tissue, that kind of thing, taken both internally and also uh, put on externally. However, the thing to note about elder is that it is uh, somewhat toxic. Right? We have these uh, uh, cyanogenic glycosides, uh, these constituents in there that can turn to cy uh, uh, cyanide. You know, after exposed to your stomach acid, and uh, 
can be poisonous. This is especially true of the bark, and it's especially true of the uh, of the leaf. Very true of the root. And now let's stay away from the root, even though that it can be medicinal as well. Uh, but if we want to use the the leaf or the bark, and really, uh, in all honesty, even the berry and the flower, I prefer to heat it. Once you've heated the, you know, especially the parts that are higher in that, the the, the leaf and the bark in, in particular. Once you've heated them to about a boiling temperature, and it needs to be in wet heat, by the way, just putting them in an oven doesn't work as well. So wet heat, boiling like a decoction, uh, and it doesn't have to be a long decoction, you know, for 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 any more than a few minutes even. But once you've done that, uh, you have you will have deactivated or you will have neutralized that the, the, the glycosides to the extent that they're not toxic to you. This is true really of the flower to some extent too. Um, and the flower probably less so and the, and the berry probably less so than any other part of the plant. But the same thing holds true if you heat it and, and indeed you find that the, the medicine is even stronger making it as a, it, when you heat it. So what I like to do is I'll take the flower and I'll actually pour, pour boiling water on it. The dried flower or the fresh flower, it doesn't matter. And then after that I'll add the alcohol to it and use it as a maceration tincture if I'm doing it, if I'm doing it as a maceration tincture. Okay. So anyway, what we use this plant for? That's the big thing. I'm sorry I got caught up on the medicine making, but there's just so many ways to make medicine from this plant. It's just in, in phenomenal, right? Um, so uh, from top to bottom, cold and flu I already mentioned. It's People talk about it being an antiviral, and yes indeed it does have certain antiviral con, uh, components to it for certain types of viruses, and in particular it does have effects to it that I've noticed that work very well for cold and flu type things. Works really well with yarrow, it works really well with bone set, it works really well with ginger, works really well with a lot of these herbs that we are kind of consider the classic cold and flu herbs, no doubt about that. It's also a respiratory herb very well. It helps kind of dry up nasal secretions if a person has a lot of rhinorrhea or a lot of runny nose, uh, and also helps uh, with that, that kind of congested cough of the upper respiratory tract infections that you get right around the whole, you know, flu, cold and flu season as well. Very good for that. Urinary tract, very good for the urinary tract. And here we're talking primarily, by the way, on these things where I'm talking internally. Primarily, I'm talking about the flower. And I'm not saying you can't use the berry, uh, but, but the flower is really, again, my preference for this. Um, urinary tract. And a lot of times for people who have cold and flu and then end up with some sort of a urinary tract infection off of that, or just don't feel right and they're just not really excreting, they're not, they're not excreting the waste through their body very well. Well, elder is one of those that works really well for that. Right? So it's kind of a shaker and a mover, but it's not heating like ginger would be or like horseradish would be. It's more of a cooling uh, herb in terms of its energetics, a lot of people would tell you. Uh, but it has that effect. It has that diaphoretic effect of kind of expanding and allowing you to sweat things out. In other words, uh, really opening the skin channel of elimination, which is one of our, our primary uh, uh, types of uh, elimination. Our body breathes in and out through, uh, especially when we're, when we're starting to get sick and these things shut down like a respiratory tract you know, becomes our nasal mucosa gets clogged up and all the things that happen when we're really not, our body just isn't flowing, right? When we have movement and flow, we generally have health. When we have stasis, we generally have dis-ease or, or lack of health. So it's one of those that gets things moving and so the urinary tract in that as well. That can even go for things that are related to just kind of general stasis issues around the body that could be gout or it could be rheumatic, you know, or, or rheumatoid arthritis or things where you have, where it really helps to have movement through the kidneys, right? Anytime it helps with that. So it is definitely a diuretic uh, and a, an effective one um, and, and can and can work in, in and out of those types of things as well. It's also an anti-inflammatory in, in not necessarily in the classic sense that we think of in orthodox medicine as an anti-inflammatory necessarily, right? But it, but it does, uh, 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 it really assist local inflammation, whether you're using it locally in either, you can use it again as a salve, you can use it as a, an oil or a liniment, or, and, and internally as well, it does help with inflammation. Inflammation tends to accompany many of these different disease processes that we, we talk about as well, and so there may be some of that that's going on as well. So. Uh, from head to toe, uh, respiratory, um, uh, eyes too, I forgot to mention, the eye compress is very good for that, and eye washes, extremely good for that. Um, upper respiratory stuff, uh, sinus infections, uh, moving down into lower respiratory as well, very good for that. Uh, urinary tract, uh, we, we talked about that a little bit. Inflammation, uh, skin and antiviral, you know, kind of as a diaphoretic and kind of a mover. It may arguably even be somewhat of a lymph mover, an immunomodulator as possible. 
uh, most herbs that move things around like that and that tend to be anti cold and flu type herbs tend to also have some lymph movement going on in there as well like you know picking up the stagnation that happens when we're sitting a lot or it's just that time of year or maybe we're even convalescent because we're really sick a lot it's one of those that really helps you know kind of the, help the system pick up and move so it works well in many different formulas where you need to do that uh, probably have gone over my five minutes I'm not sure I don't have a timer here but I just wanted to make sure and get this video out so this has been five minutes of elder I hope that was helpful and we'll talk to you next time